How you doing? All right. Hey, Suraf, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. All right, everybody. So let's continue. So welcome back. Uh, this is the breaker track uh, showcasing the latest advancements in OWASP project. And I'm Dan Gore. I'm going to be moderating this last OWASP showcase for you today. Now, I'm thrilled to welcome you, uh, Suraf Badami, who is going to give you an update of the OWASP bug logging tool project. Just keep in mind, if you have any question, please submit them in the Q&A tab just on the right hand side of this video. We leave about 10 minutes more or less on the end just to cover any questions you have. Uh, just keep in mind that the chat is disabled, so please leave your comments in the WUVA chat provided. Now, let me welcome you, Suraf. Suraf is a software engineer currently working with Gojek, an Indonesian on-demand multi-service platform and digital payment technology group. Within OWASP, actually, Suraf is one of the core project leaders and the authors of the OWASP bug logging tool, a really interesting, exciting project for bug tracking. Suraf also has experience in the fintech, aerospace, blockchain, and ride hailing industry. So quite a lot of experience in different industries. And he's very passionate about engineering and continuously learning and sharing his knowledge. Now, Suraf, are you ready to present? Hey, yes, Dan. Awesome. We're looking forward. Thank you. Hi, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, this is uh, Saurav. Um, uh, I work at Gojek as a software engineer, as Dan mentioned. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a bit about myself before uh, diving into the uh, presentation for uh, bug logging tool and what are the recent updates uh, which we made uh, in, in the last cycle. Sure, so um, yeah, I'm working with the marketplace uh, segment of uh, supply, uh, marketplace segment of uh, Gojek. Gojek is, uh, as Dan mentioned, on-demand ride-hailing uh, platform and technology group based out of Indonesia, uh, which is responsible for uh, helping consumers get their food delivered, get a ride, book a taxi, Etc. Etc. Uh, marketplace is responsible for uh, providing adequate supply for all the demand Gojek generates across all the product groups, uh, managing supply, managing uh, pricing, uh, managing the allocation engine, uh, driver incentives, etc. Uh, etc. Et so uh, we we get a decent enough uh, throughput there. We have uh, around three million driver partners sending out their pings every ten seconds, and uh, we do over uh, 2 million uh, orders every month, uh, every day. Uh, all right, let's start with the uh, today's presentation. Uh, uh, I'll be talking about bug logging tool. A uh, bug logging tool, uh, it was co-created along with uh, Sean. Uh, he is not here today with us. Uh, so uh, yeah, what, what BLT is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about uh, a brief about what BLT does, and then we can dive deeper into uh, what, what are the features which we provide and how uh, we're planning to, uh, how, how is it different from existing uh, private bug bounty partners uh, like uh, Bug Crowd and HackerOne. So a bug logging tool is a tool which allows anyone to report an issue uh, from any, any web app, any website, any application uh, which you have. Uh, it has, we, have, we are available on multiple platforms. Uh, we are available on web, we are available on mobile, uh, Chrome extension, et cetera. Sure. So what's the problem with uh, big companies? Uh, so I'll, I'll take an angle here where uh, there, there are uh, partners where uh, uh, bug bounty is actually executed as of today, but uh, but but why, why do uh, we exist? Uh, I'll take a stab at that. So uh, big companies run bug bounty programs on various severity levels, but they, those are mostly uh, exclusive to sensitive uh, information. And uh, they don't generally care about uh, all, all, all sort of uh, bug bounties and all sort of bugs, uh, which uh, exists as of today. And that gets unnoticed. They might be fixed by uh, these, these big players, but uh, it's, it's, it's the, the individuals who, uh, who come up with these uh, issues or bugs, or uh, maybe we can call it a vulnerability, 
uh, they get unnoticed and uh, most of the time uh, uh, they, they take advantage of them uh, if the product is free as, as it's written uh, you are the product right so how does bug logging tool fix the issue uh, so we crowdsource issues uh, across various platforms uh, we uh, users come to a platform report a bug they can cross link via uh, other platforms report the bugs uh, people rate on them uh, organizations are welcome to come uh, approve the product uh, approve the bug which came up uh, award bug bounties uh, as, as we usually uh, do on these all, all these platforms which we already have right now so if a lot of people are reporting bugs it's very hard to be ignored and uh, that gives them visibility uh, so uh, why why uh, why do we have blt and why do we uh, what are the features and what kind of bugs can be reported let's talk about that so we currently support several types of issues found across the web. Now I'll dive into that, uh, but uh, there are a couple of segments uh, where a lot of bugs are reported. We have CSRFs, we have SQL injections, you know, the, we have uh, you know optimization related issues. We have responsiveness, basic typos, and 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 everything around that. Now, if we look at uh, the the platforms which exists as of today. Uh, if they they just take take in very serious issues and 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 they they don't have options to you know uh, get these kind of uh, issues reported. So it, it's it's my in my personal experience, uh, I have been uh, active on Hacker One and I've tried reporting several issues. I've talked to a lot of people around this, and uh, such issues are usually uh, denied, and uh, they they don't get usually approved. And uh, it's, it's it's just a thank you note. Uh, post submission of such issues so these are the sort of uh, bug categories which we accept on bug logging tool as of now uh, we uh, accept uh, number errors for you know status errors uh, page unavailability we accept uh, five xx for uh, internal server errors uh, and service unavailable uh, some some something if if something is categorized as 4xx 5xx or some, anything severe that gets captured as part of number error. Uh, we have security, we accept security related issues as well. So if there's a data leak, uh, you know, if, if you found something on the console, uh, which, is, which, which was uh, not taken care of by devs, and you know, if you found something on the console that can be reported. Uh, and, and anything around security and such sensitive information can be part of security. Uh, something similar is functional. Uh, functional is like if you went to a, uh, let's say an e-commerce and you, you're not able to figure out the reviews or the review section is broken. Uh, so that can be part of functional uh, bug. Uh, there can be basic typo related issues as well. So if you have, if you see any typo, uh, so if, if you look at any, so let's talk about Wikipedia here. So if you find a typo there, you can easily go and you can edit and that gets, uh, changed but let's say if you, there's a commercial platform where you find something similar uh, you'll have to go through a you know contact channel talk to uh, the team maybe they'll fix it maybe they'll not nobody cares uh, then we have performance related uh, problems like high latencies uh, asset not available things around that uh, so the all these uh, segments are covered under performance and again, we have design. Uh, so these responsiveness issues, you know, buttons not available at the right place. Uh, the layout is not proper on across devices can be part of the design. So let's talk about each of them in detail. All right, so the status errors is, uh, is known as a number error on our platform. So uh, let's say, you visited a, a platform or a, a website and uh, you got a 500 error. Uh, that usually happens, uh, uh, that doesn't usually happen, but let's say if you find a 500 or a 404 via a SEO backlink from Google. So when you land in, uh, on, on such a page, uh, you'll be shown a 404 or you'll be see, seeing a 500 general error maybe by the, uh, you know, uh, the load balances, Nginx will give you a 500 error and that's it. Now, if you want to report such an issue right now, if you can go to hacker one, you can go to buck crowd, you can report such an issue. 
okay that's it uh, they'll resolve it or maybe they'll resolve it on their own but yeah the, it gets unnoticed now these error codes corresponds to a lot of uh, uh, other issues as well uh, you can uh, find the http response codes for several such issues now these these are sent, sent out by uh, the the web servers uh, based on the situation and uh, <clears throat> that can be captured on blt via you know, the reporting feature or via the extension which we have now for security let's say you come across you come across a sql injection somewhere or uh, you can do an xsss somewhere and you figure out that this this xsss works on this list now these if it's a very major issue that can be you know prioritized as a p0 p1 and that really impacts uh, impacts user but <clears throat> uh yeah so that really impacts the user but let's say that there are other security issues as well uh, which we have noticed coming on the consoles uh, uh sometimes some sensitive information is uh, broken out due to you know, not proper validation and security measures taken on the api and uh, you get to see other users information now that can be captured as part, part of the uh, uh security category <clears throat> within uh, issue reporting and as soon as uh, such a issue is reported uh, the the corresponding company or the website is emailed right away uh, and then you can track uh, the progress uh, based on the email you'll be cc'd along with that now uh, for all these categories we do have uh, you know smart uh, smart way to figure out who is the proper authority we have crowdsourced that information as well to uh, figure out which is the proper email channel and and blt also takes care of uh, following up on those to uh, get to a resolution or at least get a uh, get some value proposition out either yes or no for the users now let's talk about the functional uh, issues which happen so uh, you know functional issue is something as 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 i uh, discussed about let's say uh, an e-commerce platform where you went to the e-commerce platform uh, you want to buy a you want to buy a product uh, or uh, let's say you want to uh, wish list uh, the product and you want to buy it later but uh, when you when you try to wish list the product either the uh, the web the website responds with a success or it doesn't respond at all and when you go to uh, the wish list section the product does that does not exist and you get a bad experience so functional category covers Uh, this component where uh, you can report all the issues related to the functionality of our page uh, as uh, from the user's perspective obviously uh, and this yes the typos a uh, general typo and sanity issues which you know come across different products uh, they, it's it's a very small uh, issue uh, you know but again it gets unnoticed and you can use the platform to uh, report type related issues and we email the uh, appropriate channel right away and uh, that that helps the users to get some visibility uh, they they might get so so all these categories have uh, uh, points defined to them so based on the type of uh, issues the user is reporting there is a point and uh, it starts off with 1 and it goes up to 3 and 4 and as you accumulate the point uh, that uh, that that point can be converted back to uh, you know bounty cash and can be redeemed uh yeah now let's talk about performance uh, issues which uh, users can rep report so uh, latencies are uh, really a big problem for a very high throughput uh, distributed system so say if you visit social network and you try to picture in a full res and uh, due to very high uh, load the web server is not able to respond back appropriately or uh, so there is some inefficient code or there might be a lot of situations where the latencies are quite high so if the latencies goes up to 1 2 seconds uh, for a, a generic flow uh, and that's the case where performance gets impacted for any service so the users can uh, capture that information and bring it back to blt and the platform takes care of uh, uh, takes care of the rest and reports the uh, organization so yeah let's talk about design and user experience uh, the aspect of uh, uh, reporting the bug now this is a category where uh, 
uh, I think th- I I've never seen a bug bounty or uh, or any bounty given for a responsiveness or design side of things. Uh, but on, on our platform, we have been awarding people uh, and uh, running a lot of uh, bounties uh, around this as well. So uh, there are a lot of researchers and a lot of um, hunters, you know, just scratch around the web and figure out uh, you know some of the responsiveness breaking. Uh, the the let's say there's a search box and that gets that's breaking on a on an iPad works fine on the web uh, buttons not in the right place so all these design and user experience uh, issues and bugs can also be reported uh, directly from the source through the extension with a screenshot and that gets uh, straight away to our platform and uh, users can you know upvote and that gets reported to the source source organization right so apart from all these uh, we have a leaderboard in place so leaderboard has been there for a while now uh, leaderboard uh, uh, refreshes monthly so we have a monthly leaderboard where you, the top reporters will have a, the top reporters will have a, a leaderboard maintained and they'll have, they'll be ranked appropriately uh, and then uh, organizations can come and sponsor uh, a researcher based on their performance uh, it's something similar to what github does uh, for a project uh, then sponsors uh, and sponsors the organization can sponsor the users and these users can be uh, given additional points based on the sponsorship uh, and the price which has been associated and that can again be redeemed in terms of cash uh, out of this uh, leaderboard in terms of activity uh, the we can see the latest activity but uh, yeah uh, all the activities can be visible on the page and then you can scroll through it search for it uh, if, if you want to upvote if you want to report an issue you can just go through the uh, activity before reporting a bug so that there is no duplicates and uh, so if there are no dupli- if there are duplicates there's a chance that uh, the the latter one might get rejected so it's better to uh, go through the activity and that's where this activity segment helps us a lot search search searches across this activity to if you, so if a user wants to search something they can go through the activity and figure out uh, all the uh, all the issues which might be related to this all right uh let's let's talk about subscription so we have been uh, we have this subscription segment for a very long time now uh, we have we are live uh, for a very long time and subscription was there a subscription helps us uh, you know to to get so on the so bugist is is a platform which runs on top of plt's code base and it it's a, it's a commercial project on top of plt and subscription helps us uh, run all the back end and infra side of things so right now based on so we, these are the three subscription which we support and these subscriptions uh, don't let create bug bounties uh, on a priority level they just uh, let's create a, they, they, they just lets you, the organization uh, run a bounty and those bounties would be generic enough uh, and and anything which comes to the platform should be ranked by the organizations and organizations take a stab on whether or not to provide bounties for those hunters and uh, it, it's pretty generic at the moment but uh, i'll i'll be talking about subscription uh, more i'll be talking more about subscription uh, in detail uh, which also covers uh, private hunting uh, not disclosing the the issues and all the vulnerabilities to public uh, straight away and organizations can choose to close them on their side uh, apply a fix before uh, releasing it to public but uh, at the moment all the issues are reported publicly and uh, there is no masking of uh, security vulnerabilities are hidden for sure but others are they have there is no masking as such so it's straight away available to public okay let's talk about contests and uh, or we can call it bug hunts so customers can start a bug bounty hunting program through the platform and uh, the subscription feature allows an organization or a partner to uh, start a bug bounty or a hunting program 
uh, they need to provide the you know, a, a bounty name, some some information about the bounty around uh, which segment it covers, uh, and then they can choose a prize uh, which can be uh, distributed across all the researchers based on uh, what they found. As, as I mentioned, we're working on a detailed bounty program management system uh, to run our, all the kind of bounties with severity levels and uh, in a bounty level dashboard. So the organizations would be able to uh, look at them, prioritize them, uh, uh, directly create awards, uh, split the awards based on priority and everything around that. So uh, right now we have supported platforms uh, as web. So we have a Django-based uh, service uh, with vanilla and uh, vanilla JS and uh, pure HTML. Uh, all, all the code bases are uh, available on GitHub. Uh, we we uh, mostly uh, work uh, in a distributed way. Uh, we leverage Google Summer of Code a lot for all these development activities. And I'll come to uh, that next when we will talk about the payment integration that did with Stripe for the payouts and 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 how we are going to introduce bug or uh, proof of stake coin uh, for processing the payouts for all these bounties. But before that, uh, let's talk about the Chrome extension. So the Chrome extension is an extension which lets you uh, record a bug from any platform. So you can go to, uh, so you can install the Chrome plugin from the Chrome store. Uh, and then if, if you can browse around any website, this is not available for mobile devices uh, for obvious reasons. So uh, a user can browse around any website and uh, uh, yeah, a user can browse around any website. And uh, if the user uh, finds any sort of bug uh, in terms of uh, whatever categories we discussed so far, or maybe they find some issue with the network calls, uh, giving away additional information, which is sensitive and not, not uh, bound to be returned. Uh, logging, et cetera. All, all of these aspects can be captured from the Chrome extension itself. And, and that Chrome extension also captures some additional resources, uh, applies some uh, smart functionality uh, in the backend, extracts out information as well to create the appropriate description and then posts all of these informations to the BLT platform. Uh, so this Chrome extension, uh, apart from this, uh, there are other uh, Roadmaps planned for uh, improving the Chrome extension in future, which will help us identifying uh, trackers, etc., on top of uh, all the other platforms which we visit, so that uh, we are aware of the security and uh, and, and all the uh, nuances which happens across uh, cro cro across the uh, tracking and cross tracking feature amongst the websites which we see as of today. Uh, we also support mobile apps. So uh, we started off with a Fuse-based product uh, two years ago. Uh, it's a Fuse-based uh, application which we built in Google Summer of Code uh, 2020. Uh, this application helps us uh, perform similar activities and interact with the same backend APIs which we have today. So it helps us uh, track bugs, issues, you can directly report it from anywhere on your mobile. You can do an, an, any interactive Thing which you might do on the website, you can share yeah, report issues, you can upvote, you can create uh, a new bug bounty, you can do payouts, etc. directly from the mobile apps itself. Uh, since last year, we are we have moved to Flutter-based uh, uh, application because Fuse uh, was not very much extensible for us uh, in terms of adding a couple of features uh, using camera. Uh, so we wanted to switch to Flutter so if you want to capture some other additional uh, information and Flutter worked quite well for us. Uh, I, Flutter app can be downloaded from a uh, Play Store and uh, can be used for reporting bugs uh, uh, and other, other kind of vulnerabilities we, we find. Let's, let's talk about integrations, uh, which we did uh, in terms of the uh, payment and how we uh, leveraged Stripe to manage uh, payments and, and how uh, from the organizations and how we do payouts uh, to our users. Okay, so uh, for payment integration, uh, it's uh, the flow is quite simple. 
the customers or organizations who uh, who are who are partnered with us uh, can come and create bug bounty programs uh, on the web portal and uh, the customers uh, can add a price to the bounty program uh, they can after adding the uh, amount they can do the transaction via stripe and that gets to our stripe wallet and uh, doesn't get uh, disbursed anywhere it it it, it stays on a hold on stripe until and unless we do um, our monthly payouts uh, we have integrated with stripe as a payment uh, provider uh, uh, for uh, all the features which stripe had to provide in terms of transaction uh, and exchange fees uh, based on localities uh, we maintain a wallet so we create a wallet as per uh, customer and we we store the payment details for the customer uh, we accept the uh, by customer here i mean a user on the blt platform uh, or a researcher on the blt platform who wants to come in and report an issue so we maintain uh, a similar very simple data model for wallet and transaction we uh, for each user we manage stripe wallet uh, authorize the user to uh, figure out uh, the authenticity of the customer and and based on the redemption uh, based on the redemption pattern selected by the customer we do the payout uh, we actually don't do the payout as of now this is uh, this uh, this will be rolled out in a month uh, we are testing out all the uh, all the uh, flows to figure out if it's uh, it's safe for us to pull up and uh, once once a customer uh, creates a wallet on the platform approves uh, that they want the payments to be scheduled on this day uh, and how much amount they want to withdraw there's a simple uh, background cron which uh, triggers the payment and stripe processes the payment to the customers directly in their wallet so we don't hold uh, any payment on our our end uh, as such it's it's sort of an escrow where uh, organizations decides this much this must be the amount the amount gets transferred to the users in terms of the uh, points they have collected and and that's where uh, the payment processing happens so uh, let's talk about how stripe integration was uh, uh, how we did the stripe integration it's a very seamless integration which we did uh, during the gsoc session uh, last year uh, uh, this was done by one of our students uh, in gsoc and uh, it's, it's a very simple integration it has uh, two keys a publishable keys and then you have uh, normal tokens for security we keep all of them in our in these and uh, use them uh, on the fly for processing uh, uh, i can share the uh, link to the blog post around the detail integrations if 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 someone is interested on in how we manage stripe and we do e scrolls uh, as as payment uh, yeah that's that's mostly about the stripe integration uh, which we have right let's let's move to the uh, yeah stripe usages stripe usage is very uh, very easy and simple we just accept customer payment and then send price to bounty winners in terms of cash and that that's all we do with stripe we don't do any uh, additional items in terms of uh, the the proof of stake uh, bug uh, token which we are introducing so stripe is just simply for a for a normal currency which we have today so we take usd we transfer uh, to other let's say if you want to transfer uh, funds to an indian account we use inr to do that transaction so yeah that's mostly uh, around what we have as of today uh, in bug logging tool uh, uh, most of the features are already live in for payments payments will be out in a month uh, once we have uh, a proper qa done around that and that will be avail available for uh, people to use and and uh, withdraw all the coins they have all withdraw all the uh, Price, price, or coin they have collected on the platform as of now, and then uh, use Stripe to take that, take that cash out uh, for the, all their hard work. In terms of roadmap for uh, for this H two twenty twenty two, we have we are working on the white paper for a bug a proof of stake coin for bounty rewards. It's still in a very early phase, uh, where we want to uh, create a new coin bug, which can be used on the platform as a stake. uh this will be uh, mostly done on on top of uh, solidity and the smart contracts uh, would be designed on top of uh, pos so uh, it's still work in progress and we'll be sharing out 
the white paper soon on the BLT channel. So please, uh, if, if you're interested, uh, keep an eye on the channel so that uh, all the information and if, if you have any comments around that, uh, it would be great to learn and uh, improve on that. So uh, it's, it would mostly be on top of uh, Ethereum smart chain or uh, Binance smart chain, uh, but we are open to suggestions. Uh, uh, so please do uh, chime in uh, once we release that, uh, release the draft. Uh, we are also working on the UX improvements uh, as part of so this year's GSOC. Uh, UX improvements would be mostly in terms of uh, the front facing portal. Uh, a lot of design improvements and uh, designs which have which are, which are already in place, so we just need execution and, and that would make the platform a bit smooth. Uh, we have seen a quite a hiccups uh, in some in the last uh, few months uh, and uh, users have been reporting that. So uh, we, we wanted to prioritize that, uh, did this uh, as well. Uh, so uh, UX improvements would be done in roadmap for uh, H2 2022. Uh, so we are also working on private issue reporting, which is one of the features uh, organizations want us to do because nobody wants to push out sensitive information you know, directly to uh, people. So they want us to uh, provide a private issue reporting feature on the organization dashboard where they can uh, you know, manage and, uh, and decide when and when not to release the information directly on the uh, forefront of the product. So we are working on the private issue reporting part as well. Uh, some pieces of work are already done. Some will be covered in next couple of months. We need to roll out payments as well. As I mentioned, Stripe payments uh, integration is already in place. Uh, payments uh, will, uh, will will be a very, uh, so uh, we have been getting a lot of uh, queries from users around payments and how, when, and when, when will they be uh, able to redeem whatever they have, uh, accumulated so far. And I hope this, uh, this helps them. Uh, the next is real-time assessment of all the reports uh, around uh, a web app. So this uh, this is the segment which I was talking about uh, on top of uh, the Chrome extension. So uh, this this includes you know, tracking uh, information uh, and all, all, all the aspects of uh, around who is tracking, if the current website is tracking you or not. Uh, if if it's safe to be on this place, what are the cookies they are looking for? Uh, all kind of analytics and information would be part of this Chrome extension update, which we'll be pushing. So once you click on the Chrome extension, apart from uh, ability to submit a bug, you'll be able to assess uh, real time that uh, that what what the current website which you are on uh, captures with you. What are the issues reported on them so far? Uh, were they resolved or not, and uh, everything around the uh, around the product which you are currently on. So th this gives a lot of visibility to our uh, uh, users. So this is mostly around, this is user centric. This is not uh, around organ organizations. So users would be able to have a, a real a bird's eye view around, uh, is it really safe to be here? Uh, what precautions they can take and suggestions around that. So that's what we have for our uh, roadmap, H2 uh, 2022. Cool. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, we are available on uh, OWAS Slack uh, under the BLT Project BLT channel. Uh, you can reach out to me directly via uh, email on saurav.padami at OWASP.org. Uh, would be happy to hear your thoughts. Uh, you can also uh, uh, figure out the projects and all the references. Uh, we are available, our code is open sourced on OWASP slash PLT. Uh, this is for our backend and uh, user interfaces for web. Uh, for anything around the mobile side of things, the Chrome extension, which I talked about, can be figured out on uh, Bugheist, GitHub slash Bugheist. So you can uh, hop in there. There are a lot of open issues which uh, uh, which which needs to be addressed. If you're interested, you can hop in there. You can raise a PR. We'd be happy to uh, look at it. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I had for today. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Surav. So there's a couple of questions from the audience. Um, just like to to cover briefly. 
So first of all, there's a question by Mohid, um, and he's asking whether it, BLT includes only web or mobile application, or can it be actually used in reference to any product? He would be curious how it will work with CV or any numbering authority as per their respective country. As of now, we uh, this is cross country, so we accept uh, mostly via mobile and web application. Uh, would be great to hear, connect with Mohit and understand his thought around how uh, we can leverage this for CV. So uh, please, Mohit, feel free to reach out to me. We can discuss in detail around how and what we can do to improvise and get this feature. Awesome. And there's a question from my end, just as uh, out of curiosity, what plans do you have for future releases of the OWASP BLT? So yeah, uh, for the uh, based on the roadmap which I just shared, uh, uh, the bug coin will say take some time. It's it's a long uh, shot. Uh, apart from that, payments uh, would be one of the major thing and uh, analytics around security of uh, of any website, as I mentioned. Uh, around that tracking feature, all, all of these segments would be uh, our next priority. Uh, apart from this, all the existing improvements and the issues which we have logged on GitHub, uh, that, that's what we're taking care of at the moment. Great, thank you. And also a question from the audience on how can you actually get involved with BLT as a contributor in case you want to participate to the project? Uh, it's very simple. You can hop around uh, to the links which I just shared. Uh, if, if you have any uh, questions around the issues, if you want, uh, to uh, you know more more if you want to know more about, about the issues or you want to discuss with us you can drop drop by uh, your wasp uh, slack uh, we are available at project blt channel you can drop in, in your question we also do uh, every uh, we also meet up every weekend uh, on on uh, hangouts so you can just drop by uh, you can have a conversation there and if, if you need any help we can help you uh, out from there great thank you don't think there's any further questions left from the audience as of now. So I'd like to thank you sort of for presenting the BLT project, which I found really interesting just to see you know, the different ways um, to actually bug, uh, well, like bug uh, log bugs as well, like in comparison to Defect Dojo and really see um, that there is like those projects thriving as part of the community. So thank you very much for showcasing your project. And as uh, sort of said, just feel free to get involved in, in the project if you want. There is a huge Slack community uh, that you can join. Uh, there's probably also a channel on, on the backlogging tool that you can join. And yeah, if you have any further question to Suraf, just feel free, out, uh, feel free, free to reach out to him and um, yeah, get in touch. So thank you for attending, Suraf. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thank you.